Okay, now we are to what is really the heart of this Kepi motor, the motor body. And Seth is going to explain to us how this works. It's really amazing. So there's a lot of things here that are going to blow the scientists away that they've never seen anywhere else. Seth, or... Okay, uh, Sterling, uh, after that work we do there in the workshop, these pieces here, you can see, they are very simple. You can build up a motor with very simple pieces. This piece can be done by a CNC machine, if you have one, or cutting by hand using a, a jigsaw. These two pieces, you have here the rotor, these two support pieces, is this, and you can come This up isn't wood, is it? Yeah, phenolite, wood, it can be wood because the motor doesn't heat up, you know, so... You could use plastic. Plastic, uh, wood, whatever, you know. We use this phenolite because uh, the support is much like stronger against uh, humidity, for uh -huh. example. And then this is the final product that you have. You have the rotor inside and the supports with the spacers and screws. It's very important not to use ferromagnetic screws because otherwise they will attract the magnets of the rotor and will prevent the motor to run freely. Okay, and after that uh, we can wind the coils in this situation here and this is the final result. You have that support with the coil winded up like this. Okay, so this is the motor. So let's take a look inside what's happening inside. This is what is the crucial point. You have the magnet here, and here imagine that the coils are winded this way, right? So you have the magnetic axis of the coil in this direction, and you have the magnetic axis of the magnet, the permanent magnet in this direction. You notice that I, I wrote here north, the north polarity of the magnet, and I make it in such a way that the north polarity of the, the coil will be here too. When the motor starts to pulse, I turn on the coils, I will create a north polarity here with the north polarity of the magnet, the rotor, they will tend, the rotor will tend to align and stop in this position. But before it does so, when it's 108 and 120 degrees up uh, after this point, I shut off the circuit. When I shut off exactly this moment, 120 degrees from here, I receive a peak of voltage in the, the coils. This peak of voltage has many interesting properties and this is what is extremely different from any other motor. Now pay attention to this. Look, the conventional motors, for example, they simply go up to here and they change polarity and they continue. They change polarity of the coil and continue, change polarity and continue, and does so all the time, and so on. This one, the Cappy motor, does like that. Pay attention, look, it goes here, 120 degrees. Here we shut off the circuit. When I shut off the circuit, I receive the peak of voltage. This peak of voltage is, is, mu is much higher than the voltage of the power supply that is feeding the motor. Suppose you are feeding the motor with 110 degree, uh, volts. Mm -hmm. This peak of voltage will be normally about 400, 50, uh, 500 volts. This peak can ionize the air. Ionize. Ionize the air uh, in between the coils, you know. And this uh, ionization will create, uh, will purify the air and cool the air also. So when you apply this motor for a fan, for example, the fan is blowing a fresh air, much fresh, cooler than the regular fans. And also, because it's not hot, it's but also also, there's this cooling effect. Yes, you're right. It's not hot first. Mm -hmm. Second, is uh, there is this ionization property, which is freshening up the air, the the the, the food. Uh, you know, in science we know that when you have ionized air, it's 
uh, good for health. It, there's even some ozone that shows up? Yeah, some people they are sensitive and they can feel the ozone smell. And ozone is very uh, good for health. Very good for health. It's yeah. similar. The, you can imagine after a thunderstorm, mm -hmm. the it smells so the good. The feeling yeah. you have after a yeah. thunderstorm, the air, the temperature goes down and you feel good. There's also some health stuff, even for the magnetic pulsing, that's different from a regular motor that, like, the cats will run away from a regular motor. Yeah. But with this motor, the cats, like, come up and sit next yes, to the motor. you are right. Yeah. According to Dr. Kepi's new physics, he says that all phenomena in nature, they follow the same principles. So a device working with this energy, essential energy, he calls, mm -hmm. through the pulses, we can capture this essential energy from energy from the environment and uh, the waves of this motor if you watch it in the oscilloscope is similar to the heart Interesting. which means it has the capacity to enter in resonance with living beings so it enters in resonance with living beings is in is natural for a living being for a, an organism a, it, it doesn't matter if it's a cat or, or a plant or a human being he will feel good in the presence of this you know uh, sterling i have been to the Rio Plus 20 um, uh, conference. conference and when we have our fans working on top of the table many kids five years old four years old kids they stopped and looked at the fan and said to their to their parents daddy look at that fan look at that fan it's so cool so nice there is something different about it come come and take a look the children are very sensitive to this energy and they can perceive it much better than us adults like the cats and cats too you know let's go back to the to this position right here we talked about the um, the pulse between the electromagnetic or between the coils but also aren't you gathering some of that energy like into a capacitor or something like that let's talk about that for yes second. this is the next yeah. point when I, I you remember that I said if the pulse starts here 120 degrees it stops yeah. when it stops I let the, the 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 rotor come up to the same position again and restart another pulse and restart another pulse shut off on off on, off, on, and then so on. This creates a resonance mm -hmm. in the motor. And uh, the, in resonance, we know in physics that a system like that, oscillatory system, in resonance has the best efficiency. This is one point. And the second point, the moment we shut off the, the circuit, the peaks of voltage, they can be uh, absorbed by a capacitor, deviated to a capacitor, mm -hmm. and the capacitor will have normally a higher voltage than the voltage supplying the motor from the grid. So you store that, store that, and then put it back in. You can use it in an open circuit, like uh, applying it for other loads, like LEDs, lamp LEDs, okay, LED lamps, or you can reapply it to the motor. Do you do that in this particular case? Not in the case of the fan, but okay. it's very easy and we can do it. Okay, it's just for a matter. Something that came to me as you were talking. Yeah. Kepi, uh, Dr. Kepi talks about disinverted physics. Yes. And it seems to me that right here, where you are gathering that energy and that spike that happens, that's the disinversion. This is normal right here, what the mortal motor normally does. Could you say that metaphorically that's the disinverted point where... Yes, exactly, okay. Mr. Turney. Uh, there is much, much more uh, that enters into play in this philosophically. Phenomenon. Not only philosophically, okay. but technically speaking. Okay. That's why some people may say, well, you are producing a fan with such a piece of technology. We, uh, this technology can be applied to anything, you know. What happens is that when you have a magnet inside the coil, mm -hmm. it is also a generator. We cannot forget that. Yeah. And the two waves, in this case, because you use pulses in the motor, the generator waves, they overlap the motor waves. And then you have like a, um, a conjunction of waves that change the polarity of the, of the magnet naturally. 
Yeah, and maybe point. we can talk more later in another episode about this particular point, but just really briefly, isn't there even the magnets themselves, the permanent magnets, are flipping polarity just briefly in this process? Yes, and we can show this in the And that's probably where the, the quote-unquote free energy attributes are coming from. It enters into uh -huh. play, yes, in the system. Yeah. But that's for scientists, and that could be another episode. Let's go to the next station. Yes. Are, are, is there, are we done here? Yes, I think it's enough for okay. here. Let's really quick, let me just mention that you'll notice that this is an injection molded uh, piece that the, the most recently you, you did 2,000 runs on this. Uh, and, you know, for in allowing these plans to go out to people who want to replicate this, you could give them the CNC uh, and, yes. and the, all the instructions so yeah. they can make these things out of wood. This is the exact same, yeah. almost the same design. This is like that, yeah. or wood in a CNC. So that comes with the kit or with, with the instructions, and they would have all that information. They don't have to reproduce this. They no. could go straight to a, a local manufacturer, put it in their injection molding machine, and squirt these things out, and off you go. You're in business, right? This is it.